you know, we talked about all these different levels of skills and different types of skills. How does the LCD model account for all these? What does it look like in practice? Yeah, what we really did, my colleague Lisa Owens and I, is we fundamentally went back and examined the assumptions that have historically been made with instructional design models. When you when you look at our, our traditional learning theories and our models, they've really for the last 50 years or so been based in a fundamental assumption that we're delivering one curricula, one course, one program given a particular learning challenge. And our existing models are great at doing that. They're helping us design one thing and do that really well. Well, that's not how people learn today. Um, when you think about all of those different levels of learning you're talking about, people might learn when things go wrong they might need to learn more. They need to do more than just learn about things in the first time that, um, you know, to get more than that first introduction to it. Uh, and they need that because they're trying to apply all of this stuff on the job. So fundamentally our assumption when we're delivering one thing is that it's, it's, it, it orients us towards a more of a one and done type of approach. Whereas in learning cluster design, we're shifting the entire goal of L&D to say that our new job is to create a set of learning assets, some that you might plan to use and use in a formal sequence, just like in the past, but others that you would use in the moment of learning need um, across different ways, times, and places. And so going back to those different levels of learning or different types of topics, think about the kind of work we're all doing today. Those routine, repetitive types of processes, I mean, frankly, a lot of people are worried that that's what's going to be automated, right? More and more of our time as employees, as learners, as talent is, is really devoted towards those complex capabilities. And those complex capabilities, you don't learn in a one and done style and you don't learn in an ideal environment. That might be how you learn about it the first time, but what you really need is a cluster of learning assets that will serve you along your learning journey, that will serve you in different situational contexts that come up. And that's what the learning cluster design model helps L&D design is those types of experiences, because that's not what we're used to designing. We know how to design that one thing very well. We don't know, and we don't have a process to strategically design a set of learning assets. And that's the big difference. 